In early 2017, research started to find the right SOC. NXP's IMX family was selected for its ability to run without proprietary firmware. Ednovive's drivers also offered us an open way to run the Vivante GPU. August 24, 2017 marks the start of the Librem 5 campaign. We reached the $1 million mark on October 4th and were 100% funded on the 9th. With the campaign fully funded, we began development with the Nitrogen 6 Max, a high-end embedded single-board computer based on the IMX 6. A lot of early software verification was done on this board. It helped us nail down a software stack to pursue. Our phone's UI was non-existent at this point, but a few core elements were already running, like GTK and Wayland. Around the same time, we became aware that the newer IMX 8 generation SoC was rumored to be released soon. This promised to be a possible upgrade for the Librem 5. November 13th marks the end of the Libra 5 ringtone contest, giving us a good idea of what the notifications for calls, texts, and video chats will sound like. December 17th marks the start of LibHandy, which is what brings adaptive interface elements to GTK. To kick off 2018, we saw the first commit to Fosh, which is what is responsible for how our software looks and feels. March 2018, we got a live demo of the upcoming IMX 8 SoC at Embedded World in Germany. Development on an IMX 8M pre-production board began shortly after. This showed us that we would likely be able to use the more powerful CPU in our phones. In early April, we saw the first versions of the Libra 5 lock screen. Later that month, we officially collaborate with Ubi Ports to bring Ubuntu Touch to the Libra 5. May marks the last time that you could pre-order a Libra 5 dev kit. Fosh made a lot of good progress during this time. Here is what it looked like back then. In June 2018, we finalized the specifications for the Libra 5 dev kit and phone. Software mockups show the direction we want to take the Libram 5's user interface. The first prototype keyboard was also put into place around this time. October marks when we first got Mesa up and running on the IMX 8. In early December, the first Libram 5 dev kit makes a phone call. <coughs> Libram 5 dev kit started shipping near the end of 2018. It offers very similar hardware to what's found on the Libram 5, enabling most software to be tuned for the platform. We saw massive strides in the software during this stage. February 4th, 2019, a partnership with GD Quest was made to develop adaptive game tutorials. At this point, our default keyboard looked like this. Near the end of the month, we forked our own compositor, giving us more control over how the windows are rendered. We replaced the default keyboard with Squeakboard in July. In June, we see OpenGL able to take on Quake 2 on the Libra 5 dev kit. Our shipping announcement went out in September. Near the end of that month marks when the first Libra 5 Aspen batch was created. These early versions had thermal and power issues that made it unsuitable to ship to backers. But the Aspen batch was good enough to take outside and play around. On November 26th, the first Birch batch Libra 5s were shipped to the earliest backers. Chestnut was not far behind, shipping to backers in January. Usability improvements have been flooding in since the beginning of 2020. In February, Quick Settings was added into Fosh. Development around sensors picks up with ambient light and rotation starting to work. Our once very bare-bone UI has done a lot of growing up over the years. It is now much more stable and offers a completely new and freedom-respecting experience. Our goal to make the Libra 5 an IP-first phone is still underway. Texting over XMPP is already supported natively and is a good example of decentralized communication by default. It's also possible to make voice calls using non-default apps. All of our IMAX 8 kernels for the NXP eval boards, MCraft eval boards, Libra 5 phone, and dev kit are based on mainline Linux, instead of using a board support package, which is what is usually done in embedded Linux. This internally involves large amounts of patching. We started out by adding around 100,000 lines of code in various places to Linux version 4.8. We have reduced that to a manageable set of a couple thousand lines of code with Linux version 5.7. We expect to be shipping out Dogwood in the coming weeks, followed by the final batch Evergreen. It's been a long journey, and we thank everyone who has donated time, resources, and money into this project. Get in line for your Libra 5 at PURI.SM.